Alright, Shalom. First and foremost, as always, before I get started, giving all praise to our power. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rochakudash. I want to give double honors to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us the truth and the Ruel. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect scattered throughout the four winds of the earth that are in the hopes of receiving salvation during the time of Jacob's trouble and that are worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. Okay? Now, what you just heard me say in the beginning, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, are the true names of the Heavenly Father and of His beloved Son in the Paleo Hebrew. Okay? The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls God or Jehovah. The name Yahweh means He is or He to be. Bahashem, Ba means in, Ha means the, and Shem means name, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai. Alright, who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ or Yeshua. The name Yahweh Shai means he delivers or the deliverer. And like I said, Bahashem in the name. Racha means spirit and Kodash means holy. Okay? And this video is brought to you through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to continue to prophesy into our nation of the prophecies that are speaking for themselves throughout the four winds of the earth and to continue to speak upon points that accompany salvation and that build up the faith of the true believers of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? And as you can see, the title of this uh, lesson is Necessary Evils to Fulfill Prophecy, okay? And what I'm getting at, as um, I entitled the lesson, that is this whole uh, situation that happened last week with the WFI uh, Chicago camp, where you had, um, as they call it, a royal rumble with uh, the Palestinian protesters and them getting involved, okay? And pretty much as, you know, many of the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millicent have made videos, this is nothing but a uh, illustration, all right, to the believers of men that have been sold out, okay? Men that have crept in unawares and that have been ordained ultimately from the beginning to be false prophets, okay? Something that you should consider when you see camps that get into, you know, certain situations like this, all right, where they're out, you know, on the highways and byways, being ab obnoxious with their, you know, microphone in their hand, a big ass speaker, you know, they're ultimately not representing what Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai truly is about, man, okay? Whenever you reflect back on Yahweh Shai, you know, you read about how he was walking upon the face of the earth and you sift it through camps like this, they're off, man, okay? A hundred percent, they are off and the Heavenly Father isn't dealing with them, okay? Because this whole, you know, matter could have been swept under the rug if the Spirit was with them, okay? Because just like, as a matter of fact, um, the first scripture I want to grab real quick is Revelation 19 and 10. All right, this is Revelation 19, verse 10. It says, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See that do it not. Okay, talking about when John the Revelator was face to face with the angel. It says, See that do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship Yahweh, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, and with this whole uh, matter, Regarding uh, the Palestinians and the JE double uh, U's, all right? We should be on our P's and Q's right now, okay? Whenever it comes to certain situations like this, okay? Because Satan, all right, who plays through the vessel of the so called white man, whose biblical nationality goes back to Edom, is on a rampage to persecute the churches, okay? But once again, that is nothing but to fulfill prophecy. Okay, and this is nothing but what we see. Okay, a bunch of unlearned men that don't have the spirit of prophecy on them. Okay, that old, you know, it's just speaking as men, they're probably bought and paid for, man. All right, most likely took that 501c3 and are doing nothing but the bidding of Satan. Okay, but like I said, this whole rumble ultimately was set up by the Heavenly Father to further the process of the persecution that us, okay, 
that wholeheartedly worship the name of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh in spirit and in truth gotta go through. Okay. And real quick, I just want to um, play a little of you know the video, cause based upon you know the details and the cinema the cinematography of the whole matter, you could tell that Esau was pulling some strings, man. Okay. I don't even want to play the uh, the sound because it just it was obnoxious, man. The way that these men were walking. All right, like I said, Apostle Paul wrote to the Church of Corinth that we are ambassadors. Okay, we're supposed to represent Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, and based off the characteristics that that these men are showing forth as they dealt with this situation, they don't represent Yahweh Shai. The way that he's supposed to be, okay? As a matter of fact, come right here. Let me play it back a little. Because there was a part that I wanted to speak about. Right here. Look at this. Look at these two men right here. <clears throat> and like I said, I'm just speaking as a man regarding uh, the whole situation and putting my two cents, all right? You know, this guy's taking his jacket off, you know, puts it on the, puts it over there, and this dude as well takes his jacket off too. Why? Because they probably already knew that they were going to get in a scuffle, okay? The scriptures speak about us being circumspect, and in the book of Romans, Apostle Paul told us to, um, as a matter of fact, let me grab that scripture next. Romans 16 and 17. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. Okay? And one of the many things that the apostles, all right, of Great Millstone, who the Heavenly Father is in fact dealing with, have taught us, okay, based upon what the scriptures say, is to be subject unto the higher powers, man. Okay? And be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. Okay? As a matter of fact, um, before we keep reading on in that scripture, just to, you know, clarify how the situation should have been dealt with. Alright, let's grab Romans 13 and 1. It says, let every soul, even the subtitle says, be subject to government. Okay? And whose government are we under? Of course, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, but the Heavenly Father has put us in the land of our captives, okay? And who is that? The so-called white man whose biblical nationality goes back to Edom, okay? It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, all right? For there, <clears throat> excuse me, for there is no power but of the Heavenly Father. The powers that be are ordained of the Most High, okay? And it said, be subject, all right? So whatever, you know, regulation that it set forth in America, case in point, stop at a red light, okay, if you see a stop sign, stop, alright, you gotta follow, alright, and now when it comes to certain regulations, case in point, you know, something that is to come, the MLTB, alright, that's where you draw the line in the sand, okay, and you ultimately draw the line in the sand when it comes to the worship of the beast system, okay? You don't let anything compromise what you have with Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, okay? Verse 2, whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of the Heavenly Father, okay? Now let's look up this word, uh, resisteth, real quick. It goes back to the Strong's G, 498, Antitaso. And it says, to range in battle against, to oppose oneself, resist, okay? But the point is, to range in battle against, all right? And this is ultimately what was happening during the time of the Roman Empire, okay? With the Zealots and uh, the uh, Sicario, okay? I'm sorry, Sicari, I said Sicario. Sicari, okay? Those were organizations that you had back then with Jake that were getting together to try and confound the Roman Empire, okay? 
and you had that happening within Rome, wherever uh, you know Jake was. That's why Apostle Paul wrote this to the church in Rome because they were they were under that vibration. Okay, you know, let's just all get together. You know, just like you know, Chief Ephraim was telling uh, all Israel uh, camps to get together, and you know, round two. All right, Apostle Paul told us. To be subject unto the higher powers and to not resist, okay? And that shows you that these, like I said, unlearned men are not knowing the scriptures, okay? And like I said, just speaking as a man, they're most likely bought and paid for, okay? The whole situation in itself seems fishy, alright? Because as you further play on, okay? Boom, you get a... Uh, <laughs> you get a drone uh, camera, you know? What's that all about? You got a brother in the back just, you know, having a remote control drone hovering, you know? It just, it all seems fishy, man. All right? And that's why Apostle Paul told us, about, uh, going back to Romans 16 and 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. All right, let's go back um, and grab this Greek word for the word mark. It goes back to the Strong's G 4648, Skopeo. All right, and it says to look at, observe, contemplate, to fix one's eyes upon, direct one's attention to anyone. Okay, and this is what the true servants of prophets are going to be doing. All right, marking those that are causing offenses divisions and that are going off according to the commandment that Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai has given us within the volume of the book man okay and just like um Apostle Racha you know he had made a not a full video regarding it but he made a point that um entails we don't just do these videos under the base of trying to get some kind of satisfaction of calling niggas out okay we do it because we're at we're set to defend the gospel, okay? And ultimately to do the bidding that we've been uh, called into to do, all right? We've been given this holy unction to further feed the sheep and to lead them down the straight gate, all right? And with these men, they're nothing but, you know, like a piece of corn at the side of the path that the sheep are, you know, getting drawn to, all right? But we are the shepherds that the Heavenly Father has set up, all right, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai via the Rechakudash to snap their ass back in line, man, okay? Once again, if you, if you see yourself within these groups, all right, you need to be circumspect and read the scriptures, man, okay? Because we're supposed to be once again, representatives of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, and these men do not fit anything concerning how Yahweh Shai was walking when he came in the flesh, man. Okay? He told us to be what? Harmless as doves, wise as serpents. Okay? And even considering when Yahweh Shai was in certain scuffles. Okay? The time that, um, as a matter of fact, let me grab that scripture. Where he went, um,. I think the word cliff should be in there. There. So lucky. But there was a point where um Yahweh Shai boom, there you go. Call Allah Yahweh Shai. This is Luke 4 and 28. Okay, and this is when Yahweh Shai, I believe, was having his uh right, he was doing a public ministry. Okay? Same thing that these men were doing. Alright? But let's see how Yahweh Shai responded when things got hot okay Luke 4 and we can um, let me start at 4 uh, 28 as a matter of fact let me grab this in the NLT see what, see what it says <coughs> excuse me it says Luke 4 and 28 when they heard this the people in the synagogue were fierce jumping up they mobbed him and forced him to the edge of the hill on which the town was built. They intended to push him over the cliff. Alright? 
So it got so hot to the point where they wanted to throw Yahweh off the cliff, you know? And that's the Son of Man, okay? Yahweh himself, you know, in other scriptures in the gospel, he, um, he had said that he could bring down um, legions of angels to fight for him, man, okay? But Yahweh played the humble position when he came upon the face of the earth, okay? And as Yahweh has chosen us from this earth, we fall into the same scenarios that he was in, okay? Just like it tells in John the 17th chapter, Yahweh Shai prayed for the elect, okay? And Abba Rataza, myself and you brothers, you sisters and your children are part of that number, okay? Yahweh Shai prayed for the elect, man, okay? Why? Because he understood the circumstances that they were in, because he was in them, all right? It says, uh, reading on in the 30th verse, but he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. All right? So these men, all they had to do was just hold their tongue, bite their tongue, and use the weapons of warfare that Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai has blessed us with, man. Okay? They're mighty. As a matter of fact, let me grab that scripture next. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. <clears throat> this is 2 Corinthians uh, 10, starting at Salaki. I'll start at 3. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pull. I'm sorry, but mighty through Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai to the pulling down of strongholds. Okay? So our weapons of warfare are not based upon carnality. Okay? They're, pay <clears throat> they're predicated upon the spiritual aspects of what the Heavenly Father has endowed us with based upon the volume of the book, man, okay, using wisdom, knowledge, understanding, all right, having faith upon Yahweh Shai, that he's going to recompense us, I'm sorry, he's going to recompense our enemies according to what they've done unto us, all right, and having fear in the Lord, okay, because once again, this is not our kingdom, we're still in the land of our captivity, and just like Yahweh Shai said, when um, they took hold of him, all right, in uh, John the 18th chapter, all right, matter of fact, real quick. As a matter of fact, let me start up a little. This is John, um, just to make sure. Put the red letter on, yep. I'm going to jump a couple... I'm going to jump around in this chapter because there's a lot of golden nuggets referring to this whole schism that happened within, not schism, Salaki, this whole uh, situation that happened with uh, WFI. This is John 18, and we can start at 10. It says, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, okay, and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus, okay? And this servant particularly was the one that held upon Yahweh Shai to take him to fulfill the, the sacrifice he had to do. Okay? So Peter got carnal when he saw Yahweh Shai having, um, you know, having been put in custody, so to speak. Alright? But this is what Yahweh Shai said to uh, Peter. Then said Yahweh Shai unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? Okay? And this is ultimately what all of us have been called into. Alright? To drink of the same cup that Yahweh Shai drank of. Alright? Just like um, the sons of Zebedee uh, had to go through. Alright? When you uh, read that account where um, their mother had asked if you know they could be servants of Yahweh Shai. Okay? Which you can read that for yourself, but this is what we've been called into, man. All right, to walk the same walk that Yahweh Shai had to go through, just as Yahweh Shai was made perfect through suffering. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Damn, it's a lucky brothers. All right, we gotta be, we gotta go through that same process too. All right. So from there, uh, jumping down a couple verses to um. 
starting at uh, 35. John 18 and 35. Polite answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Yahweh Shai answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Okay? Because even during the time of Yahweh Shai, who was in authority? The Edomites under the Roman Empire. Okay? And we find ourselves in the same scenario. Okay? With the reincarnated Rome. Alright? The Edomites are still in authority via America. Okay? And guess what? We're subject unto the higher powers. So we're not fighting until our kingdom is established. Okay? And that's the point I wanted. Just to further, um, you know, give off the understanding that our spirit, alright, is simply predicated upon doing nothing but speaking the end in existence, man. Okay? We're not in the times where, you know, going back to King David, alright? Where King David was getting busy killing the heathens, okay? We're not in the time of King David, of the mighty men, alright, of um, Samson, alright, and many of the other judges where they were killing people, okay? We're in the generation, alright, and most importantly in the prophecy where we have to be martyrs for the namesake of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man, okay? So once again, by you having that understanding, these people should be pulling up nothing but red flags in your spirit that the Lord ain't dealing with them and that they're most likely bought and paid for, okay? But the Heavenly Father has set them up, all right, to be those that further give up the alley-oop, okay, to, um, you know, bring forth the insurrection upon those that fear the Lord, okay? Pursuant to 2nd Isaiah 16 and um, 68, which Lord's will will get that next, all right? But let's keep playing this, uh, this damn video. So, yeah, started getting busy, you know. And you, you know, you can uh, watch this video for yourself, the title's right there, but the whole um, atmosphere, so to speak, of this video just gives you the vibration of nothing but a bunch of fucking niggas, man, okay, because this is what they are, all right, the same, um, Jakes, all right, during the time of 70 AD that were trying to come up and, you know, throw down Rome, okay, look at that, Once again, our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the tearing down of strongholds, okay? As a matter of fact, there should be, um, there's one in Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, I know that for a fact, around the end. Um, yup, this is, um, damn. Ecclesiastes 9, starting at the 16th verse. It says, Then said I, Wisdom is better than strength, okay? Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. The words of wise men are heard and quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools, okay? Verse 18, this is the point. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, okay? But one, but one sinner destroyeth much good, all right? So once again, even pursuant to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, all right, we're not fighting against, you know, mortals. We're fighting against the principalities of this world, okay? So, our number one line of defense relies upon Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, all right? Not our own, you know, mere strength, 
okay no man all right so from there I want to kind of uh, switch gears and hit Luke 21 and verse 11 just to further allude to the understanding that this was nothing but a divine orchestration by the Heavenly Father to further get the ball rolling so to speak of the persecutions okay because once again if you call yourself and you're surnaming yourself after Jacob all right and following the legacy of the nation of Israel a part of this walk is being persecuted man okay Luke 21 and 11 and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall be there I'm sorry shall there be from heaven all right the destruction of what's coming but bef like it's like Yahweh should I said okay I believe this is yep in red letters verse 12 but before all these okay before the destruction comes what's got to take place they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you okay real quick let's look up this word persecute real quick it goes back to the strongest G 1377 Doiko, okay? It says to make, to run or flee, put to flight, drive away, okay? Figuratively, so like, <laughs> figuratively of one who in a race runs swiftly to reach the goal. Um, boom, right here. To be mistreated, suffer persecution on account of something. And what is that something? Holding the testimony of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, just like it tells you in. Um, Revelation 20 and 7. It says, um, Salaki, not 20 and 7. I think it's 4. Yep, Revelation 20 and 4, Salaki. It says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, okay? And for the word of the Lord, and which and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Yahweh Shai a thousand years. Okay? So once this persecution comes to those that follow those characteristics, okay? Oh, excuse me. Damn. I have a very sore throat, Salaki Brothers, but, um... So like I lost my train of thought, but for those that follow the characteristics of this scripture, okay, a persecution's coming. All right. <clears throat> Going back to the definition of persecution, it goes um, further on saying without the idea of hostility, uh, metaphorically to pursue. Okay. And as a matter of fact, that's a perfect time to grab um, the apocrypha. Second Ezra sixteen. I can just it doesn't matter. Insurrection. There you go. This is second Ezra sixteen, starting at the um it just going straight to the point, verse seven. It says, For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Okay? There's going to be a constant pursuit for the Israelites, okay? And there's no, um, you know, we don't know how it's going to play out, okay? But they're going to be pursuing us, all right? That's all you have, um, you know, these little hats, case in point, Judith, um, Vernai, something around those lines, uh, Israeli... Right, Judith Varnai Shore. All right, there was a quote, if I'm not mistaken, last week, where she was speaking about the black community. Let me see if I can just pull it up. I forget how she says it word for word. <coughs> um, let's see what this says. Yep. One of the people in attendance at this secret meeting was Judith Varnai Shorer. She's a former Israeli consul general who was operating out of Atlanta. 
She was one of the main people saying that the biggest problem that they had was young black people in the United States. But don't worry, they've got some black leaders on the payroll. The major problem of Israel is with the young generation of the black community. The problem of Israel is with the young generation of the black community. Point blank period, okay? So that persecution is coming, alright? Believe you, not only me, alright? But the scriptures, okay? It's written that it's coming, man, okay? And these testimonies, alright? Are nothing but <coughs> signs that it is coming, man, alright? Let's read that again, Second Ezra 16 and 70. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen sparing none. Alright, once again, they're going to be pursuing us. Alright, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. <coughs> For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Okay, verse 73, this is the point. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. And they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Okay? During that process, we're going to be catching hell. Okay? We're going to be catching hell, man. Alright? Once again, reflect back on what our Lord had to go through. Alright? He was being spit at. Buffeted in the face. Alright? Whipped. Had a, um, you know, a crown of thorns on his head. Carrying a cross. That's a very um, inhumane act that they did to our Lord, man. Okay? And as we are these earthen vessels that hold the treasure of the Rachakodash, that bear the testimony of our Lord, guaranteed that's coming down the pipe for us too, man. Okay? And with men like this, they're not prepared for that. Okay? And when that hour of temptation comes, and that pursuit. <coughs> excuse me, Salaki, man. When that persecution comes and hits them, they're going to get knocked out. And buckle in an instant to worship the image of Baal by taking that sea hit, man. Okay? But once again, these are nothing but necessary evils to fill the... Ah, oh, damn, Salaki, but it's to fulfill the prophecy pursuant to the persecution. Okay? So let's finish this off in Luke 21 and 12. It says, but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my namesake, okay? And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist, okay? Once again, our faith, our hope, is predicated upon nothing else but Yahweh Bahashimi Hawashai. Okay? We're not relying upon our own strength. We're not relying upon A, B, C, or D. Alright? There's one answer to our problems, and that is the Heavenly Father. Okay? So, with that, Lord's will, this video was uh, edifying straight to the point. I just wanted to give my, you know, two cents about this whole matter. Alright? We'll see what happens this upcoming Saturday because. Like Chief Ephraim had to say, okay, calling all camps, all right, there's going to be a round two, as they say, all right, so we'll see how that pans out, but continue to be circumspect, all right, because uh, like the apostles, bishops, and elders have been saying recently in the videos, a lot of agent activity is happening, okay, so continue to be, you know, continue to dot your I's and cross your T's. And look out for anything that comes down the pipe, man. Okay? So with that, giving all praise to our power once again. Koholo, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakudash. Double honors once again to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us his truth. And that Ruel. And Shalom.